Und zu mischen. My video today is going to be another discussion about metaphysics. Today I'm going to discuss the metaphysics of the self. Metaphysics being the inquiry into the nature of reality. And so the metaphysics of the self is an inquiry into the nature of the self. In my last video, we discussed the metaphysics of the objective world and the subjective world. Now, what I want to talk about today takes place completely in the subjective world, the subjective form of existence. going to talk about is what I think makes up the self. This is like a model I've come up with, similar to a scientific model in that it is an attempt to explain a phenomena. In this case, these are phenomena that we encounter and experience in the subjective world. This is the mind. Kind of the interior of the subjective world. And at the very, very center of the mind is the core of the self, what some people might call the soul or consciousness or awareness. Now, this point of consciousness, this self, experiences everything that happens to it, but it cannot experience itself directly. And the reason for this is that it's like an eye. sees everything that happens around it, but it cannot see itself. And so we experience our subjective existence with a blind spot right at the center where we are. However, even though we cannot see ourselves, we often try to see ourselves. And when we look inward, what we end up seeing is what is happening around the point, the central point. And the things that are closest to the central point are mental constructs. 
that are heavily associated with our sense of identity. So, for example, our gender, our memories, our body image, our relationships to other people, our beliefs, and our experiences. Now, what happens when we look inward, when we try to look at the center of ourselves? We can't see ourselves, but we do see all these things that are associated with our identity, and these things become a collective. And the mind starts to believe that this is the self, because it can't see this. Now this collection of constructs that's an illusion of self is called the ego now we need an identity of some kind because try as hard as we might we're never going to be able to see our own awareness just like we're never going to see our own eyes. So we have to have an ego of some kind. However, when we think the ego is the entire self, it often causes many emotional problems. And I'd like to illustrate how that works. I'm going to use myself as an example. So, this is my mind, and of course at the center of my mind is my awareness. Now, after I was born and became a child and my mind started to develop. I started to construct my ego. And one of those constructs was gender. I had a female body, so I knew that I was the gender that was supposed to be beautiful. Uh, desired and cute. Those, of course, are only some of the things I learned about my gender from what I saw around me in society. Now, if I'd been male, of course, I would have learned other things about my gender. I would have learned that I was supposed to be dominant, physically strong, and stoic. But I 
didn't happen to identify with those traits because I knew that they were not meant for my gender. But these ones over here were. And because of that, they became part of my ego because, of course, if I am a certain gender, certain genders have different traits that I should also be. But this creates a problem, and it's a problem that many women, many girls, have to deal with. Because if they happen to not meet society's standards for beauty, or if they are not desired enough, or if they don't think they're cute enough, then it causes a lot of pain. And the reason it causes the pain is because these traits can no longer be associated with the concept of self. If I am a girl, but I am not beautiful, desired, or cute, it literally makes me less. It makes my sense of self diminish. And that's, of course, extremely painful. Because, as human beings, we are wired for self-preservation. We want to be able to protect ourselves at all costs. And so, when we think that what's in the ego is a part of our self, and then those things get taken away, it hurts. And the brain wants to avoid that pain. And so, in some girls, it might try to take these traits back. And these girls will start focusing on makeup and dieting and clothes so that they can have this piece of themselves in their ego so that they can feel like they haven't been diminished. Other girls, like me, try to avoid pain by avoiding the opinions of others. If I don't know whether I'm beautiful, desired, or cute, then I can't hurt when that gets taken away from me. And that fear others' opinions becomes social anxiety. Another example that I've experienced in my life is my artwork. I've been interested in art my entire life, and I've always wanted to be an artist. And because it's something I've been working at for a long time, that becomes part of my identity. It becomes part of my ego. But of course, I don't just want to be an artist. I want to be a good artist. But that's not reliable as an identity, because if I encounter someone else, someone more skilled than me, it removes this part from my ego. It hurts to feel like you are diminished, like you are less. And so, when I had this as part of my ego, I had kind of a love-hate relationship with better artists, where I loved them, but in turn that made me hate myself because I hated that a piece was getting cut out of me. Another very common problem that the ego causes is in romance and relationships because when you connect with someone and when you 
have a relationship with someone, that relationship becomes a big part of the ego. The other person's love for you becomes part of your identity. And, of course, again, it hurts. It hurts a lot when that gets taken away. Now, the thing to remember is that this part, this part in the center, never changes. This part cannot be lessened, it can never be changed, it can never be altered. It's only the constructs that we build around it that can never be diminished. But who we are at the very center cannot. When you can become aware of your own ego, when you can identify which parts are ego and which parts are your true self. That's when the pain from losing ego starts to diminish. That's when you start seeing yourself more accurately. And as that process happens, and as the ego diminishes, as your self-image diminishes and starts to take the form of the awareness that we can't see. It also simultaneously starts to get bigger. And begins to encompass everything in your subjective And I believe that that is a state of balance. And it's a good place to be in because you know you cannot be diminished. And so all your fears about yourself just vanish. Anyway, that's my model, meant to describe what I see happening in my own mind and possibly in the minds of others. Let me know what you think of it. If you have something more accurate, I'd definitely love to hear it. And if not, I'd like to talk about that too. Thank you for joining me.